Projecto motion occurs as objects travel horizontally at constant velocity while rising and falling in the vertical direction. Here is the X and the Y axis. In this chapter, objects will be thrown at angle theta zero from height Y zero and land at height Y. We will nearly always choose to place X sub zero equals zero and set the positive Y direction upward. Then the downward gravitational acceleration is A equal minus G equal minus 9.8 meters per second squared. The trajectory is parabolic. At t equals zero, the initial velocity vector is v sub zero, and it points at angle theta zero from the plus x axis. We make a triangle here. This side of the triangle is opposite the angle, so we write v sub y zero equals v zero sine theta zero. This side of the triangle is adjacent to the angle, so we write v sub x equal v sub zero cosine theta zero, and this is constant throughout the motion. It never changes. It is v sub x at t equals zero, and at all later times too. At t equals zero, the y component of velocity is v sub y zero and at a later time it is v sub y. The y component of velocity shrinks as the object rises upward. At the peak of the motion, the y component of velocity is zero. The x component of velocity is still as it began, v sub x, and the acceleration is still a equal minus g equal minus 9.8 meters per second squared. After passing the peak, the y component of velocity becomes increasingly negative. Throughout the motion, the acceleration remains minus g. At t equals zero, the acceleration is minus g, no matter whether you throw the object upward or downward. With the passing of time, the acceleration remains minus 9.8 meters per second squared even at the peak of the motion when the y component of velocity is momentarily zero. Throughout the motion, the downward acceleration never changes and the horizontal component of velocity never changes. Only the vertical component of velocity changes. Please draw again v sub x, v sub y, and a throughout this motion. In projectile motion, the x and y motions are completely independent of each other. The vertical motion does not care what the horizontal motion is doing. The same time is taken for the x and y portions of the motion to occur. For the x motion of a projectile, we have equation 1 x equals x sub zero plus v sub x times t, but we nearly always choose a coordinate system such that x sub zero equals zero. For the y motion of a projectile, we set a equal minus g and obtain equation two, y equals y zero plus v sub y zero t minus one half g t squared, where g is that positive number, 9.8 meters per second squared. This is the initial height, the final height, the y component of the initial velocity, and time t. Equation 3, v sub y is the velocity at a later time, equals v sub y zero, which is the y component of velocity at t equals zero, minus g t. Combining equations 2 and 3, we get equation 4, the y component of the final velocity squared, 
equals v sub y zero squared minus two g y minus y zero. There are only three independent equations, so you are given five of the eight variables shown in this list. When you solve a homework problem, you'll make this list of eight letters and fill in the five that are given, and then look for a usable equation to obtain one unknown quantity after another. When taking the square root of this last equation, remember that you must choose the negative root whenever the y component of velocity points in the minus y direction, which is downward. At any point in the trajectory, the direction of motion relative to the plus x axis is given by tan theta equals v sub y divided by v sub x. And remember that the calculator's inverse tangent function does not always return the right quadrant, so you might have to adjust its answer by adding or subtracting 180 degrees. The velocity vector at this point is in the fourth quadrant, so we expect theta to be between 270 and 360 degrees. At any point along the trajectory, the magnitude of the velocity vector is found from v equals the square root of v sub x squared plus v sub y squared. At every instant, the velocity vector points in the direction of motion and is tangential to the path. Light from your car headlights does the same thing. The good news is that this is the worst algebra of the year where we have five out of eight variables. For the rest of the year, we have short little equations like a equals bc, so the algebra is downhill from now on. The exact same parabolic motion that occurs in this situation also occurs as a person standing on the side of the road observes the motion of a coin that has been tossed straight up into the air, rises and falls back downward in a car that's traveling with a constant horizontal velocity. From the point of view of the stationary observer standing on the road, the red dots show the location of the coin through time. This is the parabolic path. The coin rose and fell in the vertical direction while traveling at constant velocity in the horizontal direction. Air resistance is zero when the velocity is zero and then grows with the square of the velocity. When you drop a coin from one half meter above the ground, its velocity is three meters per second when it hits the ground. The air resistance would actually slow the acceleration of the coin by one part in a thousand. This week in our physics class, our goal is to understand the meaning of position, velocity, and acceleration. We will leave the complicated equations of air resistance for later. When solving homework problems this week, try to remove from your mind the often inconsequential effects of air resistance. Here is a preview of the equations for air resistance. The acceleration caused by air resistance grows as the square of the velocity. A sub r equals kv squared. The value of k changes with velocity. We have k equals one half times the density of the fluid, times the cross-sectional area of the object, times the drag coefficient of the object, c sub d. m is the mass of the object. For a sphere, c sub d changes with Reynolds number as c sub d equals 24 divided by the Reynolds number plus 6 divided by 1 plus the square root of the Reynolds number plus 0 0.4, where the Reynolds number r sub e is the density of the fluid times the length of the object times the velocity of the object divided by the viscosity of the fluid. Air density changes with height as rho equals rho zero e to the minus b times y. And the acceleration due to gravity decreases with height above the ground as g equals the gravitational constant times the mass of the earth divided by the radius of the earth plus your height squared. These equations are needed to describe the motion of a rocket that is traveling vertically. This week in our physics class, our goal is to understand the meaning of position, velocity, and acceleration. 
so we'll avoid cluttering these concepts with rocket equations until chapter 5. This week, we'll say that the drop coin falls with the constant acceleration g. In this example, we will put to use all of the equations that we've met. Please press pause to read. We'll go through this step by step as we answer each question. A marble is launched with velocity v0 equal 2.9 i plus 4.1 j meters per second from the edge of a table that is 1.3 meters high. How far along the ground from the edge of the table will the marble land? See that this motion follows the plot that we've studied earlier in the video. We use the given information to fill in 5 out of 8 of the variables. With our positive y-axis upward, we have already set the acceleration to be minus g, where g is that positive number 9.8 meters per second squared. At t equals 0, the initial velocity is v0 equal 2.9 i hat. That's the x component. So we fill in v sub x equals 2.9 meters per second. This number won't change throughout the problem. The y component of the initial velocity vector is given to be 4.1 meters per second. So we fill in v sub y0 equals 4.1 meters per second. The launch height, 1.3 meters, is y sub 0. We land at the ground, that will be y equals zero. The motion begins at the launch point, where we'll choose to put x sub zero equals zero. We don't know where the object lands, and we don't know how long it will take. Here is the final velocity vector, and we don't know its y component, but its x component will still be 2.9 meters per second. Now that we know which of the five variables we do know and which of the three we don't know, we look at the four equations to find one that contains a single unknown. In equation one, we don't know x and we don't know t, so we cannot use that equation at this moment. Let's start with equation four. We know everything on the right-hand side, so we solve for v sub y and get the negative square root of v sub y0 squared minus 2g y minus y0. We choose the negative root because we know the y component of velocity points in the minus y direction at the end of the motion. So we have the negative square root of 4.1 meters per second squared minus 2 times g, where g is always the positive number, 9.8 meters per second squared. This is y minus y zero. The final y is zero. The initial y is 1.3. This negative times this negative makes a positive underneath the square root, and we get minus 6.5 meters per second. Now that we know v sub y, use equation three to get time t. We have t equals v sub y zero minus v sub y divided by g. That's 4.1 meters per second minus a negative 6.5 meters per second divided by g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, and we get 1.08 seconds. This is the answer to question b. Now that we know time t, we use equation 1 to get x. The answer to question a is x equals x sub 0, which is 0 plus v sub x, which is 2.9 meters per second, multiplied by time t, which is 1.08 seconds, and we get 3.1 meters. The marble travels 3.1 meters horizontally as it falls 1.3 meters vertically in 1.08 seconds. At what angle does the marble hit the ground? We find the angle of motion from tan theta equals v sub y divided by v sub x. Taking the inverse tangent of minus 6.5 divided by 2.9, some models of calculators will give minus 66 degrees, which means 66 degrees below the plus x axis. 
This is the same thing as 294 degrees around from the positive x-axis. Here are plots of the height, velocity, and acceleration of the marble through time. The marble began at this height and ended at this height. Its velocity was upward and positive to begin with. It shrank to zero at the peak of the motion and then became increasingly negative. The acceleration was minus 9.8 meters per second throughout the motion. The magnitude of the final velocity is v equals the square root of v sub x squared plus v sub y squared equals the square root of 2.9 squared plus the square of minus 6.5. We get 6.8 meters per second. Question D. In unit vector notation, write down the velocity and acceleration vectors just before the marble hits the ground. The final velocity vector is v equals v sub x i hat plus v sub y j hat equals 2.9 i hat because the x component of velocity never changed minus 6.5 j hat meters per second. The acceleration vector is a equals minus g j hat throughout the motion. Question E. What is the maximum height reached by the marble? To answer this question, we have to make a new list of 5 out of 8 variables. We still don't know the final x location. x sub 0 will set to be 0. The initial horizontal component of velocity, v sub x, is still 2.9 meters per second. We don't know the elapsed time t or the final height y. The initial height is still 1.3 meters. The final y component of velocity we set to zero. That's the key to answering the question. Whenever we are asked for the maximum height of a trajectory, we find the answer by setting v sub y equals zero because the y component of velocity is momentarily zero at the peak of the motion. The y component of the initial velocity is still 4.1 meters per second. Now that we have our list of 5 out of 8 variables, we look for a usable equation. We'll choose equation 4 and solve for y. We have y equals y sub 0 plus v sub y 0 squared minus v sub y squared over 2g equals 1.3 meters plus 4.1 meters per second squared minus 0 divided by 2 times positive 9.8 meters per second squared, which is g. We get 2.2 meters. Question F. In unit vector notation, write down the velocity and acceleration vectors at that peak of the motion. The peak occurs where v sub y equals 0, so the final velocity vector is v sub x i hat plus v sub y j hat equals 2.9 i hat plus 0 j hat meters per second. The acceleration vector is a equals minus g j hat throughout the motion. This means that the acceleration is in the negative y direction. Question g. At t equals 0, what is the initial angle theta sub 0? We have tan theta 0 equals v sub y 0 divided by v sub x, and the calculator gives theta 0 equal 55 degrees. Question h. What is v sub y when theta equals 33 degrees? Throughout the motion, the direction of travel, or the angle between the velocity vector and the plus x axis, continually changes. We use the same equation and get v sub y equals v sub x tan theta equals 2.9 tan 33 equals 1.9 meters per second. Question I. At what time is v sub y equal to 1.9 meters per second? Using equation 3, we have v sub y equals v sub y 0 minus gt, which gives t equals v sub y 0 minus v sub y over g, 
and we get 0 0.22 seconds. Question J. At that time, what is the x coordinate of the object? Using equation 1, x equals x0 plus v sub 0 t, we get 0 0.65 meters. Question K. If the magnitude of the initial velocity is v sub 0 equals 23 meters per second, and the initial angle is theta sub 0 equal 15 degrees below the x-axis, what are the components of the initial velocity vector? Since the initial angle theta 0 is said to be below the x-axis, we treat that as theta 0 equals minus 15 degrees. The vector v sub 0 equals v sub x i hat plus v sub y 0 j hat equals v0 cosine theta 0 i hat plus v0 sine theta 0 j hat equals 23 cosine of minus 15 degrees i hat plus 23 sine of minus 15 degrees j hat equals 22 i hat minus 5.9 j hat meters per second. Question L. And if y sub 0 is 99 meters, what is y at t equal 2.4 seconds? Using equation 2, y equals y sub 0 plus v sub y 0 t minus 1 half g t squared. We get 57 meters. Question n. In the first problem, the marble was thrown upward. How many seconds will it take to hit the ground if the y component of velocity is reversed? We still have y sub 0 equal 1.3 meter and y equals 0, but now v sub y 0, the y component of the initial velocity, is minus 4.1 meters per second. Using equation 2, y equals y 0 plus v y 0 t minus 1 half g t squared which is quadratic in time, we have 0 equals 1.3 minus 4.1 t minus 4.9 t squared. The quadratic equation is a t squared plus b t plus c equals 0, where a, b, and c are given. The two roots for t are found using the quadratic formula. t equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a. You're welcome to use your calculator or an online quadratic equation calculator, such as Wolfram Alpha. We get t equal minus 1.08, or t equals 0 0.245. The negative root occurred before our problem began, so we choose only the positive root, t equals 0 0.245 seconds. Notice that the time depends only on the y motion and is independent of the x component of velocity. Question O. A marble is rolling at 3 meters per second along a table that is 1.3 meters above the ground. When the marble rolls off the edge of the table, how many seconds will it take to hit the ground? And where will it land? In this case, the final height y equals 0, and the y component of the initial velocity is 0. So equation 2, y equals y sub 0 plus v sub y 0 t minus 1 half g t squared becomes just 0 equals y sub 0 minus 1 half g t squared. Solving for t, we get t is the square root of 2y0 over g, which here is the square root of 2.6 over 9.8 equals 0 0.5 seconds. Notice that the time to fall is independent of the horizontal component of velocity v sub x. How far will the marble travel before hitting the ground? From equation 1 we have x equals x sub 0 plus v sub x t equals 0 plus 3 meters per second times 1 half second equals 1.5 meters. The numerical value of v sub x does not change throughout the motion because we are ignoring the air friction that would slow the marble by 0 0.001 meter per second during the motion. 
if V sub X were zero and the marble was dropped straight to the ground at the side of the table, how long would it take the marble to hit the ground? One half second. If V sub X were 300 meters per second, how long would it take to hit the ground? The answer is one half second. How far would the marble travel before hitting the ground? We have X equals V sub X T equals 300 meters per second times one half second makes 150 meters. This marble would travel 150 meters horizontally while falling 1.3 meters in one half second. Here are three different marbles, one that is dropped straight to the ground. One marble has a slow horizontal speed as it rolls off the tabletop, and the third marble has a fast horizontal speed while it rolls off the tabletop. It takes one half second for each marble to hit the ground. During that time, the fast marble travels the greatest horizontal distance while falling through 1.3 meters. All three hit the ground at the same instant. One way to hit a target is to first aim horizontally straight at the target, and at the same instant that the marble is thrown horizontally, the target is dropped. Both the marble and the target will fall by the same distance. If the speed of the marble is really high, it will hit the target before they have dropped very far. If the speed of the marble is slower, then both will fall a greater distance before they meet. It works even in this situation where the target begins higher than the marble. The marble is thrown directly at the target and the target is dropped at the same instant that the marble is thrown. Both the marble and the target will fall by the same vertical distance in equal times. The marble falls below its initial launch line. The target drops from its initial location. If the marble has a higher velocity, it'll hit the target before either has fallen as far.